first try an example to design for the shear resistance of the flank section. The question asks us to design the required shear reinforcement for the beam shown here. The steel grade is given as 500 N per mn square and the concrete grade is 25 N per mn square. The beam section is simply supported over a 9 meter span. It is used to sustain a UDL load of 90 kN per meter. The dimensions of the flank section is given here. The flank has a width of 600 mm and the web has a width of 250 mm. The thickness of the flank is 110 mm. There are three H20 given as a tension reinforcement bar and two H12 as a compression reinforcement bar. The depth of the sections for the tension reinforcement bar is 530 mm and the depth for the compression bar is 45 mm. You may pause the video for a while for you to work out the solution. To solve these questions, first you need to aware there are two modes of shear load adding within the sections. You will need to design for the shear link for the vertical shear and also the transverse reinforcement for the shear within the flank sections. For the design of the shear reinforcement, this slide is to be referred. You will need to determine the shear angle before you can determine the amount of the shear reinforcement. Provide adequate reinforcement bar and check against the requirements in order to ensure the serviceability of the section. On top of those, you have to check for the additional longitudinal force as well to determine whether the longitudinal reinforcement bar provided is adequate. As for the design for the transverse reinforcement, this slide is to be referred. You will need to determine whether shear reinforcement is required, determine the angle, and check against the criteria and determine the amount of reinforcement bar required. After that, you have to check for the other requirement as outlined by Eurocode 2. With that, we will look into the design solutions for the section. First, we design for the vertical shear load. To determine the vertical shear load, we need to construct a shear force diagram. The maximum shear force it will be equals to the reactions of the supports, as given in these equations, which is equals to 405 kN. Next, we test the shear angle based on the two equations for the 22 and 45 degree. VRD max 22 is obtained as the 373 kN and VRD max 45 is obtained as 573 kN. The shear loads of 405 is found to be in between the two loads. From here, we will know that the shear angle it will be in between 22 to 45 degree. Use these equations to determine the shear angle, which is later found to be 24.5 degree. Adopt the equations to determine the amount of shear reinforcement here. You will obtain the ratio of area divided by spacing equals to 0 0.893. Let's say H10 is used as the shear link, where the area of reinforcement is found to be 157 mm square. By dividing the area with the ratio AW per S, you will obtain the required spacing of 176 mm.
This is to be checked against the maximum allowable spacing which is equals to 0.75D as 398mm. You may use any value within 176mm. In this case, we choose to use H10 spacing 150mm where the ASW per S will be equals to 1.05 which is greater than calculated here. This is later to be checked with the minimum links required equation which based on the calculation here you will know that it can have a spacing of 786 mm. However, the spacing here seems to be larger than 398 nm. We will have to put the shear link spacing within 398 mm. With that, we choose to have the spacing of 375 mm, which is less than 398 mm. And the ratio of area per spacing will be equals to 0.419 mm. From here, we have two types of the shelling here. Both are H10, but they space differently, 150 and 375 mm. This is used for the normal shelling, which is used to sustain a higher degree of shear load. As for this, is used for the minimum shelling. Whichever loads lower than this can be used for H10375mm. Now we need to determine the locations where the minimum shelling and the normal shelling can be applied. Modify the equations for determine the amount of shear reinforcement bar here. Adopt the ASW per spacing as the minimum shear link, we will obtain the equivalent shear loops acting within the member. The shear minimum here is found to be 190 kN. Along the shear force diagram, we will locate the positions of 190 kN. It can be determined based on the interpolations between the triangles here, which are later found to be at 2.12 meter from the support. With that, within these regions, normal shear reinforcement bar is provided as H10 150 spacing and the middle stretch of the sections will provide it with the minimum amount of shear reinforcement of H10 375. Next, we need to determine the transverse shear reinforcement for the flank. To do so, we need to find data X and also data M. The data X is the half of the distance from the zero moment to the maximum moment. For a simply supported beam, data x it will be L divided by 4, which is equals to 2250 mm. Next, we need to determine the data M, which is located at the positions of the data x. From the shear force diagram here, we need to determine the equivalent shear load happening at data x. From the bending moment diagram here, we need to determine the maximum moment at the mid span. The data M here, it will be equals to the maximum moment here minus the area of the triangle here, which will give us 6 at 3.44 kNm. Next, we need to determine the shear stress acting on the flank section. It is in the functions of data FD, where data FD is obtained from these equations. The equation here requires BF node, which is obtained based on this equation. 
substitute all the relevant equations, we will obtain the longitudinal shear stress as 1.70 newton per mm square. The shear stress here is later to be checked against the 40% of the design tensile strength of the concrete. The FCTD is calculated based on the equation here as a function of FCTK divided by partial factor of safety of concrete. The longitudinal shear stress is found to be greater than 0.4 FCTD. Therefore, we will know that the transverse steel reinforcement is required. Next, we will need to determine the shear angle within the flank section. Use these equations and it is found that the data F equals to 11.1 data. The 11.1 degree is less than 26.5 degree. Therefore, the angle for the flank sections it will be considered as 26.5 degree. Substitute the data into the equation here. Before that, we need to determine the factor V1. It is obtained from this equation here, which is equal to 0.54. The maximum shear resistance of the concrete sections is found to be 3.59 Newton per mm square. It is found to be greater than the longitudinal shear stress, and with that, we know that the concrete is not undergoing crushing. Next, we will need to determine the amount of transverse reinforcement bar within the flank section. Use these equations and the ratio is obtained as 0.21. Assuming H10 is provided, the amount of shear reinforcement area it will be 79mn2 per transverse reinforcement bar. We will then need to determine the spacing limits. Divide the area of shear reinforcement bar with the factor of ASF divided by FS, which is equal to 0.21. We will obtain the spacing of 367 mm. In this case, we have decided to have the spacing as 300 mm. The amount of reinforcement bar is found to be 262 mm2 per meter width. This is later to be checked against the minimum area of reinforcement bar, which is found to be 149 mm2 per meter width. The provided reinforcement bar area is more than the AS mean. We will know that the amount of provided reinforcement bar is satisfactory. After designing for the vertical shear reinforcement and the shear resistance for the transverse reinforcement, there is one additional step that we need to calculate which is for the additional reinforcement for the longitudinal bar. There will be an additional longitudinal force acting within the member due to the vertical shear. The data FTD is calculated based on this equation and the angle here is referring to the angle of the vertical shear which is equals to 24.5 degree. It is noted that the angle here is not referring to the shear angle for the flank section. With that, we will know the additional longitudinal force due to the vertical shear is 444.3 kN. Use these equations to determine the amount of reinforcement bar to resist this additional longitudinal force. It is found to be equal to 1021 mn square.
In this case, we will need to provide 3H25 with the AS provided equals to 1473 mn square in order to resist the additional tension force. From the example here, the original provided 3H20, it will be insufficient. We will need to increase the amount of reinforcement bar to 3H20 and no curtailment of reinforcement bar is recommended within the section. Through this, we will ensure the amount of area provided be greater than the amount area required to resist the longitudinal force due to the shear load. With that, the flame beam will consider satisfactory when the additional tension reinforcement is adequate, the shear link provided to resist the shear load is adequate, and also the transverse reinforcement to receive the shear within the flank sections is adequate.